Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we're missing a few of the usual suspects. Uh, rumors are Scott, dude buddy, the nightcap OG bossman, is stuck in the vortex of sin in after boot camp. And Scott Todd is actually looking at a new plane. So good for them. But we do have the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm great. I'm just wondering if Bossman is even going to make it back next week. I mean, I don't I, know. I, I think we should bet like a five acre parcel. Yeah. You me. know, what's the over under on Bossman leaving, getting out of Vegas? <laughs> Like, is it next week? Is it two weeks from now? I think in three weeks, he's going to surface and do it in the podcast from the tunnels underneath Vegas. Okay, doesn't that where some people end up? Yeah. He's going to be like, I'm yeah, down some, here live. You know, I moved Pawn Star, Scott Bossman. Some people just can't handle Las Vegas. I mean, it's proven. This is a reality. I give you kudos for living there, Tate. You have, you know, just a great mindset and... uh Tenacious. I mean, I don't know. I couldn't. I, I don't know. I think I might get swallowed up if I was there too long. Yeah. The, the best is Tate's talking to uh, Joey Murray's teenage daughters, and he just looks at them seriously. He's like, "This is an evil place." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. We're kind of starting to see it, some of that. Those if you girls. are from Vegas and you love Vegas, we're only talking about the Strip, parts of the Strip. You know what we're talking about. Well, let's just continue the introductions. The Zen Master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zano, Mike, are you up or down after the Vegas boot camp? I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm feeling feeling great. It was an amazing uh, event, which I'm sure we'll talk about. So I feel great. Yeah, we got Taria putting in the reps. Harris, Taria, how are you and Landon feeling post boot camp? We are doing great. We were out there a little bit longer than most, so we vacationed on the front end and then enjoyed boot camp on the back end but it was yeah. really really good for those of you that are riding scooters when you're on vacation or in a new city and you see that you know don't be surprised if it becomes like a picture of landon and taria because they're on the scooters on the scooters they take, <laughs> they take that company last but not least i love it when you call me big papa tate litchfield Tate, how are things? Things are good, man. Busy. Things are busy. 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 Well, we've got a really, you know, just per boot camp ritual. Let's just do the postmortem on the weekend. So I'll start with the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Yes, sir. What were your boot camp takeaways? Uh, takeaways, highlights, uh, you know, I was very fortunate to be, uh, asked to work in the speed coaching room in the VIP room. And I, I was, hold on, hold on, Mike, hold on, hold on, Mike. <laughs> what happened? What happens in the VIP room? Huh? Oh, so all I could say it was no. amazing. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm Jeez. kidding. Tate just gave me the eye. I'm he gonna, gave me the, he just gave me the Vegas eye. My friend has a plane. I can be there by nightfall. You better be careful. I know this friend and I know his powers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Tell us about it. And I know what the plane he can parachute into now so he can be silent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just going to say that uh, it was, you know, we had this uh, speed coat. We have a mini V. Uh, threw me off track that day but anyway we had this these uh <laughs> mini groups and we were helping each other and i was just the way that everybody was empowering everybody is what really struck me not just us as there to facilitate and assist as coaches but the people themselves and how willing they were to help each other and uh, you know just back and forth there was a lot of insight and you know i think it speaks again to the power of the community and that was something that i heard uh, over and over again from people that were there they were just blown away there's a certain type of person that comes to these right and we all connect and we're not uh, we're not we love to really uh elevate everyone you know so there's that constant sharing and i think that to me that always stands out and about the virtual versus the, the in person i just love the in person for the side conversations and the networking and you know you could see people making deals making acquaintances with people they're going to do deals with so that was nice to watch as well 
Yeah. Um, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, Eric, the technician Peterson, what were your big takeaways? Well, um, you know, looking back at boot camp, I would say, I mean, first of all, it was great to, to see everybody in person and, and be there in the room. But overall, I was so impressed with, with both groups, the, the regular boot camp group and the VIP group. What I saw in both of those rooms were people that cared about this business and were interested in it and willing to do the work. So a lot of times, um, you know, it's easy to become distracted at boot camp, right? We're, we're there with our friends, our community, we're, we're catching up, we're learning about different things going on. And, and sometimes that kind of leads to, to getting off track from, from doing the work that can get done at boot camp. And instead, this time, I saw lots of people with their nose to the grindstone doing the homework assignments because they knew that if they do this now, it's going to help them improve their businesses. And they were putting in the work and, and I was impressed. And likewise, on the, on the other side, the, the regular room, uh, the interactive sessions, um, those teams work together so well, um, better than I've ever seen. So, so that was also really great to see. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, it was a great boot camp. I was happy to be there. Fantastic. Fantastic. Taria putting in the reps, Harris, what were your takeaways? Um, I, I ditto um, everything that has been said. Both rooms were amazing. I think what kind of got lodged in my brain where we had about three or four teenagers who showed up to boot camp this time, 18, 16, 15, engaged, like they were engaged. I think during one of the interactive sessions, it was the 15 year old who actually negotiated the property. And so that was kind of hedged in my mind. Like the concept is it's, it's work, but it's not difficult. Even teenagers were able to come in, grasp the concepts. They asked amazing questions. And then I kept thinking, what if I had found out about this community when I was 16, like how far ahead um, I would be. So it was an amazing weekend, but it was awesome just to see how the land business is not just for old people. There were young people, really young, in there participating and learning how to run their own land business. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. Um, because I thought, oh, this is really going to be a, an ego blow, watching these teenagers fall asleep or, you know. <laughs> start scrolling yeah. Instagram while I'm talking. Nope. They were engaged asking questions. It was, it was really uh, something to watch. And then Tate, I love it when you call me big Papa Litchfield in your own backyard. What were your, uh, what were your big Vegas boot camp takeaways? All right. Well, my first was an observation and that's that Scott Todd is not as picky of an eater as we've made him out to be. We had some Thai food one night and he absolutely crushed it. I was so impressed with him. I was like congratulating him, like, good job, man. This is, you're making such progress. And so it looks like boot camp is worn off on him and he is, uh, you know, becoming a bit of an adventurous eater. And like, this is something that I take pride in. I mean, Mark and I have been working on this for what, six years now, Mark? Years because, you know, the whole Panera bread thing. Right. I'm like, and I'm, you know it might've gone a little far. I mean, I don't know if he is Scott Todd, Mr. Panera after all, but uh, there's, there's hope there. So uh, I was impressed by that. And secondly, I was impressed by how hungry everybody was. They wanted to learn. They came ready to work. They were wanting to absorb as much information as we could. We had these, um, you know, social hours afterwards and people were there two hours, two and a half hours mixing mingling talking shop and and uh you know masterminding ideas and, and forming these relationships it was it was really cool to see uh the vip room you know we had a big vip room and i was a little concerned that it would be a little unruly but as eric mentioned everybody was there for one reason and that was to work and so as much fun as it was it was very much a working weekend and it was just a, an honor and a great pleasure to be able to rub shoulders with people and uh 
come away with some of that boot camp magic that it's so famous for because I'm feeling good, man. I'm, I'm feeling really good today. I did office hours last night and I think I scared a few people because the energy level was just too much. I mean, I'm, I'm like shouting and yeah, I was riding that high. I still am riding that high. Yeah. I mean, I, to piggyback what everybody said, I, I agree with what everyone said for me, you know, watching the, the community, from Friday bond all the way after to Sunday is absolutely amazing. The quality of people in our community is always very humbling. Like these are people I would have no problem, you know, hanging out with having a beer with if I were still drinking. I mean, just very cool down to earth, um, smart, engaged. And like Tate said, ambitious people. Now, another thing that I, I found in, in that room was there's work to do because, you know, when a guy comes up to me, he's like, yeah, I'm a year out of flight school. I'm doing, I did a million dollars in revenue. I'm at $10,000 a month passive income. And I say, well, how many hours a week are you working? He's like 40. And I have a full-time job. That tells me we have work to do. He's happy. He's making money. He's building wealth but he's just solved his money problem and now his time problem. And I kind of heard that again and again throughout the weekend, these incredible deals. But then I'm like, well, you know, how many hours a week are you working? Two people, look, I love the ambitious piece of it, but can we just be ambitiously lazy as well? Can we just combine the two and make yourself operationally obsolete? Do you want to work on the business and not in the business? And so there is work to do after that, after that boot camp. So that was like my big takeaway is like, this is amazing. And people are, are happy, they're doing deals, but they're probably working too much in the business. And you know, we need to get them thinking about, you know, transitioning from that Robert Kiyosaki book, Cash Flow Quadrants, from being an S self-employed to a B, a big business. But um, that was a, 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 a big takeaway for me as well. And then just the amount of gratitude that came our way was really, really humbling. I mean, people were really happy that they were you know, involved, exposed, um, part of this community. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't something they just took for granted. And I, I really felt that. Um, Mike, did you feel that as well? Yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. You know, speaking to the uh, power of the people in the room and the community, and uh, yeah, totally. Um, the quality of people that we continue to attract to these boot camps, and like you said, there are people that are uh, that come to us that uh, are doing deals, but they are doing a lot of work as well, and um, to help them maybe move towards the next step. You know, like you said, one of the guys there, uh, uh, David, he's there with his daughter. He said, I could use it. He called it the bicycle. He goes, when I do my work, it's like I get on the bicycle. I have to ride the bicycle for work. I'm always moving my legs. You know, I'm riding the bicycle. I want to be able to do work, but I don't have to ride the bicycle. And I was like, well, that that puts it, that's pretty, uh, I, I thought there was another way to describe that, that fit well. You know, you're constantly exerting effort, right, to get the results as opposed to being ambitiously lazy, you know, how can we exert less effort, but have more results? So, uh, yeah. Right. Right. And you know, it's easy to say, Oh yeah, you just need process. You just need systems. You just need software, but to actually implement it and execute on it is really hard. So, yeah. um, that, that was, that was something that I, I saw in the room, but I, I couldn't have been happier. I mean, we're, you know, there's a big difference when you have a lot of flight school people in the room, versus toolkit people in the room because they are doing amazing amounts of deals. I mean, at the end of right. boot camp, um, you know, someone comes up to me and is like, yeah, I've done 875,000 in revenue. I'm at 13,000 a month passive. And I'm, I'm just a year out of flight school. And then of course, um, Don Presa just mentions, oh yeah, I, I quit my job in June. I'm doing land full time. And Adam Eagles, oh yeah, I quit my job too. Like now we're sending out retired hats. I mean, it's, it's really just humbling to see that, you know, the, the people who are executing it, the, the, 
the way that the business is moving the needle in their life and can continue to do so if, um, if they start intentionally working on, you know, process systems and, and the automation piece. But, um, I, I thought it was, it was amazing, an amazing time. And, uh, you know, thank you to, to you guys as well for putting on, you know, in, in teaching and providing content and, um, providing value to everybody, uh, looking at the surveys, it was incredibly a positive, uh, experience for everybody. And, you know, I thought going into this, Oh, you know, people like virtual, maybe this will be our last live boot camp. Nah, there's something special about a live boot camp mm -hmm. for sure. I don't think we'll do it four times a year, but we'll definitely be doing it. Um, I do want to mention that uh, if you're watching this on video, one of the casualties of Vegas Bootcamp was my HDMI adapter to my Mac got left in the VIP room and I don't have my camera, which is my phone, attached to my computer and I'm using the monitor's webcam and I look like an Oompa Loompa. So... If you're watching on YouTube right now, <laughs> let the Charlie and the Char Chocolate Factory jokes fly. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So um, we're at that point now in the podcast where I'm going to give a tip of the week because Tariq had a long flight back to the East Coast, Eric to the Midwest, you know, Tate's like, I'm an OG. I'm not doing a tip of the week. <laughs> and, and, you know, Mike's, Mike's, Mike's paid his dues. Like I'm wicked smart. I'm saving lives. I don't have time. I don't have time to look for the tip of the week. I just do a quote. So I'm going to do the tip of the week. But before we go to that tip of the week, I want to mention today's sponsor, which is of course, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up the mountain of land investing quickly safely, efficiently with Scott Todd, who's done thousands of deals. That tuition for flight school is not going to cost you anything guaranteed. You're going to make back that tuition 180 days or less in cash or terms deals. Just show us your work. Schedule a call. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. The landgeek.com forward slash training. Okay. My tip of the week is a book I loved. I loved Simon Sinek, The Infinite Game. So he talks about business, business values, culture, why it's so important, how to be, how you need to be talking about that, and how you, you know, you, you need to be thinking about business not in the short term, but in infinite ways. And just a really a phenomenal book, uh, especially for you know, when you're building your virtual assistant team the values, the core values you need to put in place and how to live those core values as well. So check out Simon Sinek's The Infinite Game. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners, remind them the only way I'm going to get anyone to come back on the podcast, Eric, Mike, Tria, Tate, is if you do us three little favors, you got to follow us rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. And I'm going to send you for free a signed book of Dirt Rich, which by the way, I checked the secondary market earlier, 1.2 million right now on the secondary market, a signed copy of Dirt Rich with my horrible handwriting. So do it, do it. Now look, don't blame me if the market drops by the time you get the book. That's not on me, but as of right now, according to my geeky sources of signed books by obscure authors, it's going, it's going for a pretty penny right now. I'm not sure if it's US dollars or crypto dollars. I'm not sure about that 1.2 million, but it's something like that. Maybe it's Lyra. You got to get the book to find out. So please do that. All right, Tariya Harris, are we good? We are good. Eric Peterson, are we good? 
We are not good. We're great. Right. We're great. <laughs> it's a little inside joke. A little inside baseball for those of you who are listening. We just got to, from back from boot camp. Mike Zeno. Yes, I just want to add, you would be a great firefighter, Mark, because when people start, one thing you learn to fight upon, when people start making fun of you, you make fun of yourself even harder and it goes away. You With the uh, Oompa Loompa, you, you knocked it out of the park. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, it's easy to be self-deprecating when there's so much material. <laughs> see, see how good you are? Yeah. <laughs> Tate, are we good? We're very good. All right. Well, um, again, thank you to the listeners. And hopefully we're going to see you at the next virtual boot camp in October. Go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp to find out when that's coming to a screen on Zoom your way. All right, let's do this. One, two, three. Let Let freedom 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 ring. ring. Not bad. Not bad. Um, Is anybody watching Apple TV, uh, the nature show with Paul Rudd, Tiny? Am I the only one that watches these nature shows? Nature show? That sounds interesting. It's amazing. It's amazing. And they like different parts of the world and you see like, they just like follow these little animals and bugs. And I watch- talking about like Meerkat Manor? Is that what you're talking about? Well, uh, no, it's called Tiny. It's like tiny mm-hmm. cr- animals and bugs in different areas. And then you see like, uh-oh, this little field mouse is getting attacked by a hawk. You see the hawk swoop down and the field mouse escape the hawk. And then, you know, there's like uh, the, the beetle is now going to go look for a, ma- or a mate on top of this log. But before it can do so, it's got some competition. So they fight and like, you see like the beetle, like is like in like a still like huge sumo wrestlers. Like they have to like pick one up and tackle like, or like throw it off the log. And then, then it goes, Oh, that, that, that the beetle won. And now it's going to go look is that because game. he was Ant-Man. Is that why he does it? Is that him? I, I think he does it because Apple threw a lot of money his way. <laughs> yeah, that too. I, don't, I don't know. Uh, if he's, you know, he's a big nature guy. Maybe I thought he was that superhero Ant Man, wasn't he? Ant Man, one of those. Superheroes? You know, he was Ant Man, so that maybe that made sense. But yeah, and they show a lot of stuff with ants. The the, the videography is amazing. It's amazing. Write that down. That's a good tip of the week, right there. But I feel like you can learn so much, but just by watching nature, right? Bugs. Bugs. Watching bugs. Yeah, it's just you know, it's it's. Yeah, but it's, it's just more than that, Trey. You got to see. You got to see. I'll, I'll try one episode. I'm not a big bug fan, so. You could fast forward one. through the bug pieces. Okay. How, how do you feel about fire hawks? There's like a big brush fire. The hawks come swooping down to eat the other animals because they've got to come out of the woodwork to escape the fire. No way. Yeah, it's awesome. You see the smoke and then out of the smoke come these hawks. It's like a horror film for animals. It's a horror <laughs> yeah. film for animals. I'll tell you what, if you're not grateful for your life, watch this nature show. That's a tough life. It's brutal. Like, you know, I don't walk out my door. I'm like looking out left and right. Like when's the tiger going to come attack me? You know, I think it's good. You can look out for little guys. Do you guys have the same phenomenon when, like here when it rains really hard, the worms kind of come out into the, you know, and then they get stuck there and the sun comes out and that's the end of them. Well, am I the only one that rescues the worms? Like if I see them in my walkway, I run around and try to get them all before they get fried by the sun. Tate and I don't know worms? what rain is. What's rain? We don't, we don't do that. Awesome. <laughs> We're in a desert. I gotta get them all. I can't save them all, but I save the ones I can. And then the rest of them, you know, they fry like bacon. That's so cool, Mike. That says a lot about you. <laughs> That's really cool. I think Eric would do it. It looks like he agreed, no? Eric is you not know what I learned save about the worms. No, I think I let the worms go, Mike. <laughs> you know what I learned about the cicada? They stay uh, they're grubs for 17 years underground. Yeah, right. And then after 17 years, they come out and they for two days they climb like they, they go on like this pilgrimage. And for two days they mate and then they die. 
It's fascinating, actually. Is that fascinating? Yeah, they they're like, like aliens. They're like the lotus of bugs. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just riveted with this stuff. Talk so. about a lot of prep time, huh? Getting ready for that moment. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> You got to know your moment, right? Got to know your yeah. moment. I feel like an Eminem song coming on here. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, you own it. I don't know the uh, words, but you know the song. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks, guys. See everybody next week. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttaub.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.